Hi, it's Maria from the Wood County District Public Library. I have an experiment that I want to start today. It's called a walking rainbow. And I'm gonna, I have it kind of set up here. I wanna explain it to you. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cups. The first one, the, the next one, the next one, and the next one are half filled with water, just tap water. So the first, the third, the fifth and the seventh are filled with water. This, this experiment, this demonstration is going to demonstrate a walking rainbow. So let's get started with some color because we need color to start, right? So I'm going to put six drops of red food coloring in the first, in the first cup. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, sort of. <laughs> and then yellow in the next cup of water. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that was a little bit more precise. And six in the next cup of water, six blue. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then red again at the very end. So here we have red. Six again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So you can kind of see these colors. Now we would like to see them mix, right? To make a rainbow. So we're gonna kind of mix just the water and the food coloring together. Swish it around. It's pretty, isn't it? I like doing experiments with food coloring. It's not a good idea to get it on your clothes, but you can wash and wash and wash your hands, and we're all washing our hands a lot. So, Okay, then for this experiment, it's going to demonstrate capillary action, and we'll say that again. Capillary action. What we use are pieces of paper towels, and we fold the paper towels once, and then fold them again and then yet again and what I'm going to do is just put these paper towels in each cup to the bottom from one to the next fold it over and there's going to be some action I already see some movement of the water up the paper towel do you see that can you kind of see that? You'll see it better as time goes on. So we're going to do this, then we're going to step away for about, oh, I don't know, maybe two hours. Give it some time to move, to take that action. To the next one. This is fun. It's like putting a little puzzle together. It's going to be a walking rainbow. Or maybe I'd call it a rainbow snake. Does it look like I have these paper towels down to the bottom? This one is a little there. Okay. I think that's pretty good. I'm curious as to what's going to happen next. Red, yellow, blue, and red again. So let's give it a little bit of time and see what, what kind of capillary action we can find in our walking rainbow or a rainbow snake. We have a lot of wonderful books here at the library about doing some science experiments, particularly with nature, and we can have a lot of fun outdoors and bringing outdoors inside and learning about capillary action. That's the way water moves up a plant. And this is from a plant, right? Paper comes from a tree. So let's, let's give this some time. We'll check back in together and see what has happened. Thanks. Hi, so we're back. It's been oh, probably about an hour, maybe a little bit more than an hour. So we've seen some change. We're gonna we're gonna just look and observe 
the changes we've seen in our capillary action, they're still mostly red, all red water, all yellow water, blue water, and red water. Hmm, the water has not started moving and going into the empty um, cups, but I do see that the colored water is moving up through the paper towels, the yellow, the blue, and the red is moving this way. So we do see some capillary action here in our walking rainbow. Hmm, I wonder what more is going to happen. These paper towels are serving as like wicks and they're moving the water into the up up through the paper towel. So it's kind of defying gravity, really, isn't it? So the adhesive force in the in these fibers are helping to move this water and we see the water because it's colored. So I'm gonna be kind of interested to see if the colors mix. Right now the colors are just moving, but I'd love to see them mix. So maybe tomorrow we'll tune back in and see what more has happened in our capillary action rainbow walking, or walking rainbow. So we'll tune in again tomorrow and see what changes have been made. Stay tuned. Hi, it's the next day and we have observed some more capillary action. So the water has actually wicked through the paper towels and you can see the walking rainbow now so much better and the water distribution is actually almost level. Remember this one had water, this one had water, this one had water, and this one had water and we colored it and the middle ones did not have any water? Well you can see now the rainbow from the red to the yellow to green. So the mixing of the yellow and the blue to make green and the mixing of the red and the blue to make purple. So our walking rainbow. So the forces of the, of the capillary action has um, proven itself to be really um, beautiful here. So capillary action depends on cohesion, adhesion, and surface tension. I'm gonna say that again cohesion, adhesion, and surface tension are all at work here to defy gravity and pull the water up and you can see it because it's colored water. So pulling it up and put and and displacing it in these other cups. So that's exactly how plants use capillary action to pull the water up from the roots into the stem of the plant or the trunk of a huge tall tree and into the leaves of the tree to distribute the water. Capillary action. I love it. A walking rainbow. Or I'm thinking it's like a rainbow snake. Hmm. Now that gives me some more questions. Don't you have like a lot more questions when you see something done or you're observing something carefully and you want to find out more from books? Well, now I'm thinking about a rainbow snake because I have heard of a rainbow snake. So now I have more questions to ask. Stay tuned for more questions. So now I have more questions, right? When you do something, you want to ask more questions about it. When you see something, you want to ask more questions about it. What better place to get your answers than a book from the library? And we have lots of great books here at the library that are available through our curbside service. So we made that walking rainbow and then I started thinking about a rainbow snake and I happen to know there is such a thing as a rainbow snake from this wonderful book here at the library called Snakes by Nick Bishop. And there's a photograph that Nick Bishop took of a rainbow snake. Wow, look at all those colors. Look at all those colors in that snake. Now this snake is a rainbow boa from South America and it gleams with beautiful colors. It's actually shown two times larger than it actually is. So it's twice as big in this photograph as it actually is. So I wanna make a rainbow snake. Do you wanna make a rainbow snake? I wanna make a rainbow snake with bubbles. I love bubbles. Do you love bubbles? I do. So a rainbow snake, we're gonna make a rainbow snake again with colored water. So I'm going to be careful. It's okay if I get it on my hands because it washes off and I'm washing my hands 
all the time these days, but I don't want to get it on my clothes, so I will be careful. So this is a, just a dish top cloth, just a cotton dish cloth, and I've cut very carefully a bottle, the top of a bottle. So it gives me like a, a funnel to blow through, but I'm going to put my cloth and I'm going to adhere it with this wonderful rubber band. Don't you just love rubber bands? So there it is. It's like a drum. And I'm going to dip this in a dish of water that I'm going to pick up ever so carefully. It's a dish of water with a soap solution in it. Now what I'm going to do is put some colors in the water and on my little drum here. So I've got some yellow. I'm going to put just a drop of yellow on both. This is a drop of red. And you know what red and yellow make? You know it. Orange. And then a drop of blue. And you know that red and blue make purple. So there you go. I've got this. Now this is a great project to do outdoors. I'm indoors today and I'm going to be very careful, but this is a great project to do outdoors. So let's make a rainbow snake. Are you ready? Take a deep breath. Let's go. Don't lean into your... Ooh, more water. Is it growing? Is it getting longer? Ooh, ooh, it's so long, I love it. Woo! I can just keep going. You can see why this is such a great thing to do outdoors. Did you see the colors in that rainbow snake? Did you see some red? Did you see some blue and yellow? And red and blue make purple? So there you go. I've got some nice soapy hands. I've got some wonderful books here too, all about snakes. And we have more here at the library. So we would like you to come to the library, call us up 352-5050 and let us know what books you'd like. Maybe you'd like some snake books. Maybe you'd like some science books. Maybe you'd like some nature books. Maybe you want to find out more about what snakes live in Wood County? What snakes live in Bowling Green? I do know that garter snakes live here in Wood County. And you can find out more about garter snakes by checking out a book from the Wood County District Public Library. Go to our website, WCDPL. Sign up for our summer reading program. Learn more about garter snakes. Learn more about snakes, about science, just about crafts and projects that you can do at home and especially outdoors. I want to learn more about garter snakes. Those are the snakes that live in our area. We do have a book about garter snakes. I also have a good friend who knows a lot about garter snakes and about snakes, all kinds of snakes. I'm going to call up my friend Craig. Craig works at the Wood County Park District. He's a naturalist. I'm going to call Craig right now and see if maybe we can talk to him about snakes. Ring, ring. Hey, hi, Craig. Hi. Hello. Hi, Craig. It's good to hear you. It's great to see you. Wow, this yeah. is so nice having you here. I'm going to put you on speaker log real quick so I can put this down. <laughs> Hey, Craig, thank you so much. Craig Spicer from the Wood County Park District. He's a naturalist and he comes to our library to help us out and he is with us today. So this is great. My friend Craig, I have really been enjoying Craig's videos on the Wood County Park District Facebook page, Turtle Time. So I actually want, yeah. want, want to talk to Craig soon about more turtles, but I have a lot of questions about snakes. So I definitely... Oh my gosh, Craig, what is around your neck? You've got to tell us what's around your uh, neck. Well, I had a feeling that you had questions about snakes, so I actually invited my friend. This is Snake. I know it's a very original name, but he doesn't mind. This is Snake, the Eastern 
fox snake, one of our roughly about a dozen species of snakes that we have in our area. And isn't he beautiful? Gorgeous. Gorgeous. And who likes checkers or chess? Anybody like checkers or chess? Whoa, look at the bottom there. A perfect checkerboard right on the belly. Wow. Wow, those are some interesting patterns. So how does how do snakes get those colors? How do snakes get their markings like that? Well, that's a really big question. It goes back many, 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 many years. But they all develop their colors based on their surroundings. So we have some dark colors for helping to blend in with the dark parts of their environment. And sometimes there are some light colors to help blend in with maybe some brighter parts of their environment. And those colors together, and how well the snake is able to blend in and be hidden in its environment, that's called camouflage. I like that so, camouflage. I'll ask you, where do you think that snake, the eastern fox snake, would live in the wild? Oh. Somewhere dark or somewhere light? What do you think? I'm thinking pretty dark, like a woods. Yeah, you're right. So, we used to have a great black swamp around here. Yeah, swamp. Really wet soil, but really tall trees that blocked out the sun from hitting the ground. So, snake, the eastern fox snake, really good swimmer, but also a really good climber. So, okay. he's going to want to be hidden in those dark forested environments. Oh, and they climb the trees. Yeah, absolutely. Isn't you can see crazy? snakes kind of... Snake's climbing all over me right now. You're the tree. That's right. Wow, wow. So does this snake also like the sun? Does it need the sun to keep warm? Now, yeah, that's right. So all snakes actually need some sun um, because they're reptiles. They're actually cold-blooded. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that if for some reason the snake had a cut, and we were to like touch the blood for some reason, that doesn't mean the blood would be cold. Yeah. What it does mean though, is they need to maintain their body temperature okay. based on their surroundings. So okay. if they need to raise their body temperature up, then they need to go out somewhere sunny and warm up and bask out in the sun, absorb all of that heat. Okay. If they need to cool down, well, they gotta go somewhere kind of shaded, maybe even in the ground if they have a hole that's already been dug by another animal they can climb into. Oh, they don't dig their own holes. No. And that's actually a pretty common misconception. Because mm -hmm. let's look at snake here. A lot of people <laughs> think that snakes dig their own hole. But I, I did. I or, did. What would you dig it Like, because you hear, oh, there's a snake hole. Well, just because it's a snake hole. So I just assumed they would dig. I really didn't think about snakes climbing trees, but I yeah. did think about them digging holes. So I am learning something. You know what though I didn't know is that the moms want to be in in the sun a lot when they're you know waiting for the babies to be born. Does this fox snake, does it lay eggs? So a snake here is a boy. Okay. Not, this snake anyway will not lay eggs. However, female snakes, they will. Okay. I was reading this garter books um, book that we have at the library, and we have a lot of books about snakes. So there's a lot to learn from people like yourself who are experts, and then also from authors and photographers that have created books. But it says that the garter snake actually doesn't lay eggs; it just has the babies live. Is that is that is that true? Is that what I read? Maybe I misread that. No, yeah, there are a couple of species of snakes that their eggs will actually stay inside of their bodies. And then they'll actually have a live birth, kind of like mammals, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like us. So that's like a, that's the garter snake then. Mm -hmm. So would a garter snake live in, in our area? Would, would that be a common snake that we would find around Bowling Green and Wood County? Yeah, absolutely. So garter snakes you'll definitely find around your gardens. I know sometimes people get them confused. Yes, they'll say, yes. They'll say it's a garden snake. Yes, like, yes, well, oh, but it's got the tea it. in it. Yeah, excellent. Right, that's right. It's a garter oh, snake. Garter but snake. They're pretty common around uh, around towns and around um, some 
more, you know, <laughs> forested areas around town, stuff like that, and your, uh -huh. your uh, nature preserves. Like, if you're in Bowling Green, Winter Garden, mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll have a that's where garden. That's where I've seen probably the most, when I've been out walking, the most snakes yeah. is um, scurrying across the trail very fast, very fast. And I move very fast to get out of their way, so... <laughs> They, they surprise you. I, I think that I'm mostly surprised by snakes. I don't think that I'm usually scared of a snake because I see them wanting to get away from me, you know, even faster. They, they really know, like, what's going on in their environment. And I was actually reading that they, they don't really um, smell. But, oh, no, they do smell, but they smell with their tongue. Yeah, that's right. So we'll see. Is snake going to do it? Snake's looking pretty... Pretty calm right now. Hmm. You don't smell very, very much. Then oh, I cry. There we go. So every time that snake actually sticks out his tongue, he's not tasting, right? Mm -hmm. But he kind of is. He's tasting the air. So what he's doing is he's flipping out that tongue. He's got a forked tongue. So he's flipping that out. He's catching all of the smells in the air, and then sticking it back in the roof of his mouth and touching it to something called the Jacobson's organ. So Ooh. if your name is Jacob, you have a really cool organ in there. Ooh. But the Jacobson's organ is what the smells, so the smells will actually touch the Jacobson's organ, and the Jacobson's organ will send signals to the brain, and then the brain will figure out what snake is smelling. And we actually have a Jacobson's organ too, except it's, guess where? Um, in our throat? Tongue? No, I have no idea. In our nose. <laughs> so we just breathe in, and the smell brush past the when we're right when here. we're not congested with allergies. Okay. Hmm. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Wow. Wow. There is so much to learn about snakes. So, how much does this snake weigh? Would you say? Is it heavy? How much does he weigh? Yeah. Is he heavy? It's a great question. <laughs> like um, a couple pounds? Uh, maybe, maybe a pound and a half. Oh, okay. So not very much. Not very much. Mm -hmm. Tell us about when they um, not lose weight, but when they lose their skin. Ooh, yes. So they have scales all along their body. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer here. You can see the skin texture is very bumpy, right? Uh -huh. It's covered in scales. And all those scales overlap in one direction. And that would be the direction that if they were to be traveling, this way, right? That way you can skip across things that are in the form. Okay. However, when those scales, when they get all wore out, or maybe when snake is getting a little bit bigger, it needs to stretch out its body a little bit, snake will start at the corner of his mouth and will actually find like a rock or a stick or something to start to break that skin off. Right now, there. Okay, wow. Are you ready? Snake already has some new skin underneath ready to go. But snake will break that skin right at the mouth and then will wiggle his way through really tight little, maybe under some sticks and under some rocks, things that'll catch that skin so as snake pulls through the skin is going to stay there and the snake will get rid of all of his skin all at one time even the scales over his eyeballs Ooh, eyeballs wow. yeah snake does not have eyelids he can't blink so to keep his eyes nice and moist there needs to be a little barrier there and that little barrier is a scale shapes exactly oh like the eyeball. Wow. I did not know this. Wow. Craig, where do you learn all this about snakes and all the other animals and all nature that you that you know so much about? You read books? Yeah. So lots of books, especially in college. Well, a lot of books there. When did you know but, that you wanted to be a naturalist. Will you read books? What else? Oh, sorry, because uh, there's more than oh, books. The internet is a fantastic resource. And there's also some really cool uh, publications 
by the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. And let me just, oh, I actually got one right here. Nice. Actually, the, the Division of Wildlife. Okay. So this is one specifically on, can't really see that very well, on reptiles. Okay. There we go. And inside of that, and I bet that the library might be able to get these, but inside sure. are a whole bunch of pages of really quick access kind of keys and factoids and stuff about all sorts of different reptiles that we have Excellent. in Ohio. That's a really good resource if you want to know more about reptiles really okay. quick. Okay. Well, we um, we have a lot of books on snakes. So we have books that have drawings of snakes. And then, of course, we have a lot of books that have the photographs of snakes because um, they're, so they're so beautiful and there's so many different varieties of snakes. And they live all over the world, don't they? Yeah. Um, is there any place that doesn't have snakes? I wonder. Not Probably not Antarctica. It's so cold there. That's a question I don't know the Well, there we go. We can do I some research. We can do some research. We can do some research. Yeah. So, this is so great. What is that? What is what does the fox snake eat? Does the fox snake eat foxes? Eat what? Foxes? <laughs> no. <laughs> foxes probably what? eat a, that snake though, right? It we could, yeah. But fox snakes like many snakes are carnivores, which means that they only eat meat, right, or parts of other animals. Okay, I didn't know that either. I thought all snakes ate mice. <laughs> wow, I could really learn a lot. I, I mean, I have a lot of questions, but I could really, I mean, I that's great. I did not know that. Uh, so, we, we, uh, we talked about how snake climbs really well. Snake will actually like to climb up some trees and find some, maybe some little, some bird eggs, or if those bird eggs hatched, oh, maybe some little baby birds. Okay, so it would eat, it would eat baby birds then, but mostly, mostly um, plant. Anything you need to catch. Okay, okay, okay. Wow. Well, tell us the names of some other kinds of snakes that we might find in Bowling Green. The gar garter snakes, the yep. fox snake. Yeah. What else? You can find a, a black rat snake. It's rat. A really, rat. It's one that you'll find a lot around farms. Okay. Um, and agricultural fields, stuff like that. Um, uh, Kirkland's snake, Kirkland. the queen's snake, the... Um, no, 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 no. I'm not sure if you would have them in Bowling Green or not, but where there's kind of sandy ridges and um, nice mature woodlands is a great place to find, oh, I just forgot the name of it. It's uh, hognose snakes. Ooh, I like that uh, name. Those are pretty cool. They're actually, they're actually kind of like a, a chubby short snake. Uh -huh. They're not very long and lanky, but they have this upturned nose that makes them look a lot more menacing than what they really are. Uh -huh. But what's amazing about the hognose snake is it's self-defense. Oh. If you, were to, if you were to bug it a lot, now I'm not telling you to bug I'm it. I'm not bugging but any snakes. If the, the hognose snake felt really threatened, what it will eventually do is it will belly up, it'll stick out its tongue, and it'll let out a really smelly musk. Oh, that makes it seem like it's dead. Like back off. Wow. Nothing wants to mess with it. Like, oh, like, like it's already like it's already decaying. Like it wouldn't be healthy right. to eat. Right, yes. right. Good thinking. Wow, nature. Wow, such interesting defenses. That's so interesting. Craig, I am so glad. I hope that we can talk to you some more. I know kids are going to have lots of questions. I suppose they can email us the questions at woodkids dot org or wood kids wood kids at wcdpl dot org i'll say that again wood kids at wcdpl dot org and where could they email you to get some more information sure they could email me personally at c spicer s p i c e r at wcparks.org. Okay. Um, or you could just check us out on Facebook and right. you can always just send us a message 
Okay, excellent. And same here. We have a pretty active Facebook page here at the library too. So we'll put this video up on our Facebook page. Craig, I really hope that we can talk some more um, real soon. I'd love to talk about um, your turtles and, and all that you know about turtles and also hares. So yeah, thank you so much. Do you have anything else you wanted to, to share today? Because you know what kids are asking about. Well, you already touched on the Turtle Time videos, yeah. but we also have some skit or snake videos where we talk more about snakes. Oh, excellent. And each little bitty factoid about them, you can oh. learn so much more about Oh, I'm going to do that. So would I go to the, your YouTube, uh, like Wood County Park District YouTube? Is that how I can find them? You can head to our YouTube uh, channel, or again, you can head to our Facebook page. Okay. And in the video section, there should be the skits or snake okay. video starring snake. Nice. Nice. Excellent. Craig, thank you so much. Thank you. I hope that you get You're to, welcome. I hope that Thanks I get to, sp oh yeah, and I'm going to spend some time outdoors today. Oh, and I wanted to mention thank you very much for the, um, storybook walk on the Slippery Elm Trail. So I want kids to go out there on the slip Slippery Elm Trail. Maybe they'll find some snakes. Actually, that is where I see some snakes now and again because they're going across that tr the, the trail um, where it's so nice and warm. And um, yeah, so, this, so you guys are participating with us with the storybook walk. So thank you very much. Thanks, Craig. Yeah, and that goes, I believe it goes from, uh, starts at Montessori yes. School Act and goes to Black Swamp Preserve, where nice. there may be some things. Excellent. Thank you very much, Craig. We'll take, take care. Uh, thanks for having me on. Thank you.